Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. Are you a new or experienced investor wanting to learn how to have a successful syndication business? Learn from the nation's leading syndication expert, my friend, Vinny Smile Chopra. He has created a multifamily academy where you will learn everything about deal analyzing to selecting emerging markets, managing assets, and much more. In the academy, you'll find over 500 lectures and templates to help you run a successful syndication business. Your membership also gives you access to Vinny every Wednesday through masterminding and coaching calls. Vinny came to the U.S. with only $7 and now is a CEO of five companies, acquiring and managing a portfolio of more than 3,500 units. He's completed 26 successful syndications ranging from 50 to 500 units and created a portfolio valued over $200 million in commercial real estate. He built the academy to teach and mentor investors like you to succeed. To learn more about the Multifamily Academy, text LEARN, L-E-A-R-N, to 474747 or call his team at 925-766-3518. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Jacob Blackett. Thanks for being on the show, Jacob. Thank you very much, Whitney. Yeah, it's an honor to, to know you, Jacob. And uh, it was great to share a stage with you in Tampa a few months back at a conference and, and hearing you speak and, and from your experience. And I, I knew you'd be a great guest. Appreciate your time. And, uh, you know, a little about Jacob. He began his real estate career in 2010 when he bought and sold his first two residential fix and flip properties. Since 2012, he has placed over $40 million into income producing real estate. He founded Holdfolio in 2014 to create partnerships to profit from real estate. Today, Holdfolio owns almost 500 total units comprising mostly of multifamily apartments. Last year, he founded Syndication Pro in order to better serve the techno technological uh, needs of real estate investors. Outs outside of his businesses, Jacob enjoys staying active, volunteering as a big brother, and education as a hobby. Jacob, you know, thank you again for your time and, and just the value I know you're going to provide to the listeners from your experience. And uh, but Give them a little bit more about who you are and just what your focus is right now, and then let's dive into some of your expertise. Yeah, so... My background, like you mentioned, back in 2010 is when I first started in real estate. I was actually a sophomore in college and studying finance and entrepreneurship. Late one night, saw an infomercial on TV about flipping houses and kind of kind of caught my eye. There was a free seminar, one night seminar. And so I thought, you know what, I've not learned anything about real estate at college. So I want to go to check it out. Long story short, I, I started flipping houses through college and when I graduated kind of had the decision go chase the financial uh, kind of sector climb up a ladder maybe maybe into some corporate finance or or investment banking or something or go play with real estate and, and so doing the fix and flips I thought that was really great I was enjoying it I went full full uh, time when I graduated I actually took out some student loans my senior year just to get some extra working capital, kind of maxed out those student loans and, and just, just kind of ran off. I did a lot of fix and flip, a lot of wholesaling. Uh, I, my, my whole strategy was to, to buy, fix, sell properties and then use those profits to build a buy and hold portfolio. And, and so that was my dream was, and I think a lot of people have that dream is having that portfolio that's paying those dividends and kind of gives you that flexibility. And so that, that's what I was dreaming for and striving for. And it, it didn't take but one really good year uh, where, I, where my, the income taxes that were due when my CPA finished filing my tax return, I had to sell a few of my houses in order to pay that. Uh, that tax bill and, and it just, it, it really stepped me back. And I thought, man, how, how am I gonna build this portfolio if I have to pay all this, ta all this in taxes? And so that's actually where syndication came into play where the, where the model of actually, actually 
partnering with investors to buy income producing properties. You don't have a huge tax barrier to, to get into this from a syndicator's perspective, right? And so, I, so I, that's why I kind of turned my model and said, well, instead of owning 100% of 50 houses, if I could, if I could own 20% of 1,000, then I'm way, way farther ahead. So that's, that's kind of where I started creating partnerships with investors and scaling that out to, to where we are today, where I kind of uh, intuitively, I, I'm, I'm really focused on systems and automation and streamlining things. And so that's kind of where I've found myself in terms of offering uh, a platform for other real estate professionals, uh, specifically syndicators, to manage this entire process online like I've been uh, doing because it's been, it's been so powerful for me. And, and then also still as a, a real estate operator, still building the portfolio, making partnerships. So kind of in both worlds. Well, there's so many things I could ask you about. We'll, we'll have to have you back to really dive into how you got started. And so, because I really want to commend you on, uh, you know, I mean, getting started as a sophomore in college, you're going to school and you started flipping homes. And I mean, that, that's, it's very impressive. And I know the listeners can relate to that or, you know, they're, whether they're in college or, or whether they're working full time, you know, at another job, you, you can make this happen if you want it bad enough, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to dive into that sometime. Uh, but but you know, today you know we, we wanted to focus on just the building blocks of raising capital and how technology can help us. And I, you know, you're an expert in that, and so I just you know I look forward to getting into this. But but get us started in how you've done this, and and uh, you know I want to talk get into just some of the ways you've you've automated this process. Yeah, well, I think thinking back to when I first started doing my my first syndications, I. I was doing a lot of calls, a lot of individual emails, uh, sending PDF documents over email. And, and you know what, just, just this process of raising money from maybe five to 10 people, it was pretty arduous having the same conversations with all these different people and, and emailing this document and then trying to get this document back and creating the spreadsheet to manage it all. And so when I, when I sat back and said, man, how do we, how do we make this better? How do we, get to that next step, this was back in, in 2014, I looked to technology. I, I said, I, I was actually looking at some crowdfunding, uh, real estate crowdfunding websites, and just seeing all of the automation and the ability for investors to create accounts and have a dashboard and, and the, the power from our perspective to be able to post an investment and, and have your entire network just view that and review the details. Everyone has the same information and, they can all work through this investment process, just auto, just automate the entire thing. Uh, that that's what really got me excited, and and kind of how I had the vision of how how are we going to take this from these very early on syndications to doing a syndication a quarter, or or even we we're doing syndications every month or every other month uh, at at one point. So we uh, built out a website. We created, partnered with, with a development team, spent a lot of time, almost an entire year uh, in, in development and had our attorneys kind of in, in the process of making Three thousand users, and we have uh, over three hundred active investors with us, and it was all based on that foundation, that that website, the platform, and it got to a point where, uh, where my fellow my fellow colleagues and other syndicators were kind of looking at me and saying, "How do how do we build how do we build what you built?" and and I kept getting this kind of question every once in a while, and I would always always think, well. I spent a lot of time, a ton of money, and you know, I I don't know if I could recommend anyone to go build out their website. And so, it was actually after a, after a mastermind event that I realized really only only a, a couple of the entire room were using a, a platform. And so I started uh, doing some research and realized that there was a big need uh, 
for other people to be using a platform like I had been using, I think I was taking it for granted. Mm -hmm. uh, once I really started learning how the majority of people were raising capital. And so that's where, that's where I decided to go ahead and polish up the corners and formalize syndication pro, which is actually a licensing platform that allows other syndicators to use, uh, use that streamlined automated professional platform to raise capital. And it's been really awesome just onboarding so many different people. Everyone has different ways of raising capital and, and just uh, kind of growing that platform has been really unique. So tell us some of the, the crucial things that, that a platform like this does for us that even if we don't have a platform like this, that, that we should be considering when we're raising capital. You know, so what, you know, what are some things that this, uh, you know, some things that you, you wanted in your business or ways that you're either following up with investors or ways you're building those relationships that, that you said, you know, this system is going to help me do this. And now obviously it's helping lots of other people do, do the same thing. But what were those things that, you know, help us to think through that? Like, I need to make sure I'm doing these things uh, to really build those relationships and to be able to raise capital. Yeah, we could talk for hours. We could. About intricacies but i think a few key ones number one is uh when you're raising money it's there's a certain element of customer service that you're i mean you're servicing your investors they want to feel comfortable with you they want to know the the updates when the they want to know the details of their payouts they want to see their portfolio and so from a customer service perspective of just having a place for your investors to have a dashboard and uh having an environment for for you to easily provide updates and documents and distribution history. Um, I think that that's a, that's a key part. And uh, another, another kind of example I could give would be just the overall automation. So if we spend, if, if we're raising $2 million from 20 different investors and, and we're spending between us and our, and our admin and, and individuals, who knows, 120 hours from A to Z. Of, of doing that and if we could cut that down to 30 hours I mean that's that's a, a lot of time to be saved so the other that's the other big part is just from when someone is interested and in, and in maybe putting a soft commitment versus actually investing and going through the process of verifying that they've read the documents they have the necessary information and how how much they're investing how are they investing and how do you manage individual investors from IRA investors from trusts and LLCs and giving your investors a, a nice easy way to do that and 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 then moving into the process of actually signing the documents you know how do we have that so it's just they're they're now signing the documents and then they're funding their investment and you have a whole different array of investors some are investor or some are tech savvy so they'll kind of have intuitive they'll, they'll just kind of go through the process Others aren't so tech savvy. So how do you build this so that you don't have investors kind of scratching their head? Like, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, like, what am I supposed to do next? Or, oh, I was supposed to fund my investment. That's, so, that defeats the whole purpose at that point. Exactly. So. Yeah, you don't, you know, you don't want to be answering these type of questions from all your investors. Like, uh, you know, did I sign or, or what do you need me to do next? Right? Like, that's, you, you want it all automated. So those, those are a couple couple examples I think for those who who are meeting new investors and attracting more capital uh, one part is getting to know these investors so for us for example we we like to go ahead and implement a system by by where when people register with us they go ahead and see see a, a prompt that says please schedule a brief introduction call uh, we're required to get to know our investors this will take 10 to 15 minutes and the, the links in there, they can go ahead and schedule the call on your calendar, you control that. And um, just with that automation alone, some people will register, they won't schedule a call. And maybe you'll, you'll try to email them, you'll call them, they'll never get back to you. And so you have all this wasted time if, if you multiply that. For example, we register five to 10 investors every day. So if, if I'm trying to create follow-up campaigns and, and email and call these people like we did for a long time, I'm spinning my wheels, spending a lot of time. But what we learned is that if those who register with you, if they actually schedule a call, those are the most serious. Everyone else is going to be in your 
email base. They'll, they'll circle back with you. They'll let you know when they're ready to invest. But if you focus on those people who actually schedule a call and who are serious, I mean, those are the people who are going to be investing with you. So it's these kind of little built-in built in automations throughout the entire process that kind of save, save us time as syndicators. So, yeah, you know, this, this platform, uh, I mean, I, I know it would help anybody in the industry grow their investor base, no doubt, and just those communications, especially going through a deal. Uh, I mean, I, I've done a demo and it, it's pretty amazing. Uh, I, I just, you know, after you go through a deal and, and you're going back and forth with all the documents and trying to answer this question, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's great to have some kind of system like this. Uh, it's amazing. So, uh, but let's say, you know, I'm, I'm not really ready for that kind of expense yet. I'm not really ready. I'm not, I don't feel like I'm, uh, you know, I'm there yet, you know, and I, I want to just kind of go through this deal, maybe my first few deals uh, before I, I commit to something like that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, what are some ways that I can be increasing, you know, my number of investors that are registering? It's impressive, you know, five to 10 investors a day are, are registering. That's, that's amazing. And so, you know, you know, help us or help the listener to be able to increase their investors that are engaging uh, with them. Yeah. From, from that standpoint, it's, it's awareness and it's, it's about really, you're going to pick, you're going to pick a few channels that you, that you want to become known in. And so uh, doing things like podcasts, for example, if you're, if you're able to find yourself uh, some things that you're able to add value to other people, something that you know that you can share with other people, you could potentially find seats in, in podcasts. Uh, there's listeners there that will drive traffic. Uh, biggerpockets.com is a huge community of, of investors. Uh, so being able to be active on the forums and, and contribute to, to that, there's, there's different meetups, right? Different meetups, conferences, events, getting out there and, and getting, shaking hands, meeting people, uh, really any, any way. There's so, so many different ways to kind of get your name out there there when even we've had a lot of success with local news outlets like the business journal it, we just you know we just bought a property uh and so now we're going to go ahead and touch base with the business journal and say hey we bought this 80 unit uh, apartment uh, xyz and th this is our plan with the property over the next 12 to 18 months and this is who we are and so the business journal will love will love to push out a little thing about this this real estate company who bought this property this is their plan and people are reading you know professionals are reading those business journals and and so you'll get leads from from things like that what's been the say the top two channels that you all found to be successful well for, for certainly uh bigger pockets so my my business partner sterling white uh he actually focuses on branding and marketing and so he does, uh, he, he writes blog posts and he's a contributor for bigger pockets. So that that's been great. Uh, and then number two would probably come into the category of, of podcasts and news, uh, articles, um, and kind of right in there with number two would be referrals. So current investors basically, and Whitney, you probably re realize this is once you have a, a nice little, uh, a, a nice group of investors and you've been working with them, they'll tell their network, they'll tell their friends. And that actually becomes a really significant just word of mouth referral uh, on a continuous basis. Yes, I, I know, uh, and I, I'll, I'll never forget, I know Vinny Chopra mentioned one time on the show, he said, you know, treat, the, treat every investor like they're a, a, you know, a million dollar investor. Even if yeah. they're only putting in, 25,000 treat them like they're putting in a million because if you do eventually it will be a million because it'll be you know the referral to this person referral to this person and eventually even that person's investing a hundred or two hundred thousand you know yeah. so you know treat them like they're investing a million um, you know because because eventually it will be uh, absolutely but yeah so you know now we've you know we're getting people to the website where and you know how are you building those relationships you know so you know they haven't uh, or maybe even even had a call with them you know, how mm -hmm. are you following up to continue to, uh, you know, raise capital, growing your database, but building those relationships after you've connected? So the, the first step, like you mentioned, is we, we like to get on a call. And that call is, is really going to be uh, an opportunity for us to understand kind of 
who they are, what their background is, what their investing experience is. It, is this going to be a good fit? For example, we like longer term investments where we may look at refinance instead of selling. So does that resonate with this person? Um, being able to just take some detailed notes and, and understand who that person is. And then really from an organizational standpoint, because we have over 3000 people registered with us, it's, it's really from that standpoint, you're trying to find a balance of keeping people updated. Um, for, for us, we don't like to send out too many emails. Typically we like to at least have once per month, kind of an email going out to everyone that could be about a deal that's coming through the pipeline or, or just kind of cute the, the updates from the quarter. We will put on a little webinar, kind of go over how the quarter went, the, the good things, the bad things, what, what, what we're working on, what's coming ahead. Uh, so really it's just, I, I think if you make an effort to at least once a month be, be sending out some type of update or sharing, I, I know a lot of people will share like kind of almost like a curated little, little email that is like sharing market updates and kind of things that they have their eyes on. Um, any, any way to just be, be in front and, uh, of these people. Some people will say uh, once per month is not enough. Uh, that's, that's great. Uh, I, I think probably at least once a month. Um, and, and then of course, as you start to um, raise capital on that next deal, you'll have investors that are circling back with you, having questions. It's an opportunity to, to get back in touch with them, rebuild kind of upon, upon the relationship that you already have, get those questions addressed, uh, look for any other opportunities to kind of connect with them. So it's really, you know, it's, it's not, I don't have like a, it's really not rocket science, right? It's pretty simple. Like just people have registered with you, they're interested. So just keep them updated, uh, touch base with them once a month, at least. There's a lot of different ways you can go about that. And uh, we like to keep it pretty simple. Now, I like that. It's a, it's a lot different conversation or relationship too when they've actually come to you as opposed to you going to them, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, and I was going to ask you about the frequency. Like you mentioned, you know, at least once a month, uh, but you don't want to just blow up their email inbox either, right? right? So so what are some ways, Jacob, that if somebody's not ready to go into something like Syndication Pro, maybe they've never done a deal before, you know, they're, they're pursuing that first deal and they're not ready for a commitment uh, like, uh, you know, some type of software is as nice as Syndication Pro. What, what are some, some other technology, uh, you know, that they should be thinking about, something they could use to get started building their network? So some really kind of baseline options that I would suggest is uh, MailChimp in order to kind of professionalize and they, they, you can even, you can even manage your contacts through there. It's a, it has a little bit of a, like kind of a CRM type uh, functionality, really baseline. Uh, and then Calendly is a great tool as well. We, I mean, I have a paid su subscription because I, I like to have a, a lot of different types of calls, but it's free for I think one or two, one or two calls. So you can use that um, as, as a great way for if you have a website and you're inviting people to get in touch with you rather than doing just kind of the generic contact form, put, put a link out there, integrate it with your calendar and let people go ahead and grab 10, 15 minutes on your calendar to, to get, a, get an introduction. And, yeah, and I, I would say also with your websites, make, it, make, make there be a bit of a call to action. You know, not just this is what we're doing, get in touch with us, but make it a little bit more enticing, like like view investments or 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 uh, le learn about our our current investment opportunity. Even if you don't have an investment opportunity, these types of call to actions are just going to get people from from interested to to just take that extra step because they they're potentially in a position where they're looking to put capital right now. And if they see like uh, get in touch with us versus see investments, you know, which one is going to get them to take a little bit more action. So I uh, just keep that, keep that in mind on your sites. I like that a lot. And uh, so Jacob, before we have to go, just a few more questions. Uh, what's been the hardest part of your syndication journey for you or syndication process? The probably the, most difficult part was the first syndication we did 
online and at scale. So I had been raising money with friends and family, really, really tight knit people that I knew rubbed shoulders with. And, and so that kind of snowballed and that was good. But what we wanted to do was take that outside of our network and, and start investing with people that didn't necessarily, weren't necessarily family and friends. And so the biggest hurdle for us was raising capital for that first deal. And so we uh, could have filled the first deal with our friends and family, but we said, no, no, we want to get outside that circle. Uh, and it took us a little over three months to raise uh, $350,000 uh, on that first deal. And, and, and then it kind of that time cut to maybe two or three weeks for a second deal, relatively the same size. And, and now we'll raise a million or more in about 24 to 48 hours uh, through the platform for you and what what is the what's the number one way you've recently improved your business other than using something like syndication pro oh boy uh, i think i think a big part is video content and just finding opportunities to to shoot a little piece of video content whether that's an update so i i could choose to do a monthly update to my investors write up some bullet points and and have a written narrative or I could take three minutes to basically have a video with that narrative and just kind of talk through it. I think the more, especially when you're scaling up, the more opportunity that people have to see your face and, and actually watch you speak rather than just written narrative, it's just gonna build that relationship more and more. So I think that's that's been something that's been really strong, uh, especially as investors have the opportunity to kind of get to know you before they even talk to you. Uh, it just helps that whole process so much. What, what's the number one thing that's contributed to your success? Oh man, um, luck. Uh, no, I don't. I don't. I don't. Know. Cert certainly, um, being in the right place at the right time. Uh, I think for me, I, I've always been very conscious, or try to be very conscious of what I what I know and and always try to find people who are, are where I want to be. And I think early on when I first started, when I first really got going with real estate, what really propelled me uh, was a relationship that I made with a really experienced investor. And I was able to, it all started with one wholesale deal. I was just wholesaling a house and he ended up buying it. And, and I just took a minute to kind of understand, do some research on him. And then I took all my deals to him first, basically gave him this first look uh, opportunity. And it was through that relationship that I actually ended up managing all of his acquisitions and working in house. So the, the, that was the big, big part for me was that early relationship with the experienced operator, uh, being able to work my way into his organization and just catapult my experience um through that yeah and I, I don't see that as luck i see that as you hustling you're putting yourself out there and you're hustling that's that's yeah. incredible uh, and and before we have to go tell us how you like to give back well personally i love big brothers big sisters and so i've been a part of big brothers big sisters for over four years now we do an annual donation to big brothers big sisters and then so many other things. And anytime, I, anytime something turns my head as an opportunity to contribute some capital or, or um, get involved, I, I always try to push myself, uh, no matter how busy I am, to just take that extra opportunity to do that. Awesome. Uh, Jacob, you know, I appreciate you so much being on the show and just providing your expertise and how to build these relationships with investors and how you've automated that process and giving us some tools so we can automate it as well. Uh, tell the listeners a little more about or just how they can get in touch with you and uh, learn more about Syndication Pro. Sure. So you can email me, jacob at syndicationpro.com. You can visit syndicationpro.com. We have a, a, a good you know, the, the website will give you a pretty good idea what's going on. Feel free to get in touch with me directly. I think I can certainly offer a, a special deal for anyone of, uh, who's a friend of Whitney, friend of mine, and, and we would certainly take care of you. Awesome. Thank you for doing that, Jacob. We really appreciate that. I know the listeners will as well. And uh, appreciate the listeners being with us today. I hope you'll connect with Jacob. Hope you'll check out Syndication Pro. I know they'll do a demo with you uh, if you're interested in that, right, Jacob? 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they'll do a demo with you and show you through that program and how it can uh, benefit your business. Uh, but also go to LifeBridge Capital and, and uh, connect with me. I'd love to talk to you and help you any way I can. Go to the Real Estate uh, Syndication Show Facebook group and connect as well so we can all learn uh, from experts like Jacob and grow our businesses. And I hope you're sharing the show. I would appreciate it. And we will talk to each of you tomorrow. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show, brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.